Hey folks, back with another little video. This time we are just getting to Chance Cove. It is a little bit of rain on the window. It's gonna be a rainy few days. So I'm trying to film this intro before I get there because uh, time is of the essence. This is the start of the rain. It's gonna pour today, tomorrow. It'll lighten up, I think, on Wednesday. So. So hoping there's nobody on my campsite and we can get in there and uh, hustle to get set up because the rain is just going to intensify. It's just starting. So, oh, sorry I didn't film all that, but you'll understand why. <laughs> and as you see, I got the hammock up underneath the tarp, but no insulation in. I got the clam up and. I got in the rain for you guys. A little different. I got the old tarp on the. Uh, yeah, I got the old tarp on there for a uh, an awning to get myself in and out of the trunk a little more comfortably. I just got my doors on. And like I said, the Dutchware Dutch side entry tarp is on top of the hammock. And. Uh, I got a little bit of an exit going over here. <laughs> but that's enough for now. Well, I hope to catch another little break in the showers and uh, that's the hardest part of it all done, uh, for sure. She's set up pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna get my chair in and uh, get this bag in out of the way. Touch base when we're inside. <laughs> yeah, I got as wet as I thought I was going to get. <laughs> anyway, the hell with it we're in now. Yeah, I'm going to get this straightened up. Oh, that is better. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I, uh, Tried to get here as quick as I could. I knew it was going to start raining and uh, it ain't stopping. It is calling for heavy rain for the next, uh, the rest of today, all of tomorrow and all of most of Wednesday. Stopping over, it's being Monday. It's going to rain all Monday. It's going to rain all Tuesday. Heavy as hell tomorrow. <laughs> and it's going to rain on, uh, it's going to rain forever. No, it's going to stop over like that Wednesday. And I'm gonna pack up and come back out of the, come back out of here on a Thursday morning. That's the plan anyway. Don't realize how wet you're getting, man. You know you're so busy working, you don't uh, you don't really take notice of how wet it is. But I um I played it smart. It was just pecking. I got stuck behind a. Uh, like a flat deck truck with a great big excavator and a Pepsi truck behind that. Yeah. Guys were doing 18 kilometers an hour up the hills, so. And uh, I would have made it just before the rain, but just as I got stuck behind those guys, it started raining and then raining heavier and then raining heavier. And uh, yeah, so. I caught a little break, it was just spitting, just misty when I got here. So I first thing I did was set up the hammock, set up the tarp, because that's vulnerable. I'd rather set the hammock up and pull the tarp down over it. I don't like setting the hammock up under the tarp. I don't think I've even ever done it. So, And I planned this out pretty good. I uh, attached, the, attached the tarp, hang on. So yeah, I attached the tarp to the center ridge of the center point of the hammock to clam as I was putting it up. And then I got my old wingman tarp. Nicely symmetrical too, huh? Coming out. And up on the center pole here, so I've got a nice awning. Last time me and Downright were up with the hot tent. Pretty much the last few videos ago with the hot tent. Uh, he did a similar situation and I was like, yeah, 
Good on you, but downright that was a wicked idea, so I stole it for this. Like I said, we're gonna have a lot of rain and I'm living out of the trunk of the car, so I figured I'd make this as much of a comfort thing as I could. Oh, I'm trying to dry off, man. <laughs> I got soaked. My eyes and eyebrows and everything are so. I noticed in a lot of my old videos too that I uh, spend a lot of time behind the camera narrating to the back of my car. <laughs> So I took a tripod with me this time, figured it would be uh, a little more professional. I can frame myself up a little better than that. Oh, <laughs> you can look at my soaking wet head. I don't have contacts and my eyes didn't get better. My glasses are soaked, so I've just got them laid to the side. Oh yeah, oh! I didn't get very much set up. I got the clam set up. Set up. Sorry, I'm talking like a newfie. Got the clam set up, and I got my chair set up, and that was a. Uh, and I got a bottle of water set up, and that was about it. <laughs> I'll, uh, I got the hard stuff down here now. I got the door set up on the uh, side entry tarp, the Dutch side entry tarp. That's its inaugural run, by the way. Haven't even checked it out. Haven't been inside it. Hope it's not leaking. <laughs> Pretty sure I can trust Dutch to have that thing bonded well. Um, what else? I still got to stake out the uh, hammock. I've still got to uh, put the insulation under it and on it. So, still got a few odds and ends, a few tasks to take care of. I'm not going to lie to you, I don't know where my undercoat protector is. I may have forgotten an undercoat protector. But I think we'll be okay. I think we'll manage without an undercoat protector here. No, it might be in with the undercoat. <laughs> I bet it is. I bet it is. If not, I bet my old 2Q's EQ is down in the bottom of the underquilt bag, so I'm okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I threw it in with the underquilt, because why wouldn't you? you know? That's going to keep me at peace for now. The uh, It's here somewhere. <laughs> anyway, we're here for Monday night, Tuesday, Tuesday night, and Wednesday, Wednesday night. I got some meals planned. I'm a... Uh, soaking wet but it is uh i'm gonna get the propane set up here now and get the heater going get a bit of warmth going try and dry up myself before i even go messing around with the uh insulation hopefully i'll catch a break if it stops i'm just gonna bolt down and get the under quilt down and the top quilt in the protector on should be good I should have shown you. I, uh, I'm just working on setting up the propane. I finally got it. I've been wanting the carry bag for the Mr. Heater, big buddy. The uh, a local store here, our Princess Otto, had them listed on the website. I drove all the way over. I bought the Mr. Heater, big buddy bag. Came home. <laughs> it was the buddy not the big buddy apparently there's a difference mine wouldn't fit i had to drive all the way back bring it back double check the website it's their fault man they had it listed as the big buddy anyway i was determined to get one then so i ordered it off of amazon got a nice little pouch here to store the hose and uh i'm just working on getting some uh, propane heat set up you're not going to see this bag again until thursday so i figured i would Show it off and all its awesome glory. I'd be thinking I could have put two more propane cylinders with me, but I got four here, so plus a 20 pound tank outside. So somebody approaches. We got company, we got neighbors. <laughs> I'm not the only one crazy up camping in the rain. <laughs> Probably the only one in a tent and a hammock, mind you, but yeah. Oh yeah, crank her up for a little while. 
Oh, it's better already. Oh yeah, much better. Better already. Got uh, some puddles starting to form out there already, man. It's uh, some heavy rain coming. I gotta shut that door too. There's mosquitoes getting around. I wonder if this gonna lighten up or what? It's 20 after three right now. I got a lot of time before it starts to get dark on me, so. Hopefully it lightens up enough for me to get my uh, insulation down to the hammock is all I'm trying to do here now. Pretty sure I'm in a high spot here. I don't think any puddles are going to creep in underneath me or anything. It's going to pour, man. I've been desperate to get up for a camping trip. I, uh, I've probably said to you guys before, if you... Uh, Plan your trips around the weather in Newfoundland, you would never go anywhere. You're going to camp in Newfoundland, you're going to camp in wind, you're going to camp in rain. You're going to camp in snow like we did very recently, you know. It is what it is, man. So, ah, more work to do. I can't stop doing stuff. I got to, uh, I'm going to shut that door. I can see mosquitoes coming around already since I uh, turned on the heat, so. Yeah, buddy. It's, uh, it's starting to puddle. <laughs> I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be all right, man. Even if it doesn't lighten up. Insulation, gotta go down in the hammock one way or the other. I'll, uh, I'm just trying to draw myself right out here now. My jacket and my hair is everything is starting to dry out pretty good. Uh, I'll make another attempt then, and the uh, next big mission now is to try and get the insulation down without getting soaking wet. Shouldn't be too bad. I mean, I got it in a. In a in a thing, in a cotton bag, cotton storage bags. Got to plan it all out, you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't want mistakes. Mistakes are not no bueno in a weather like this. So hopefully we can, uh, this is garbage. Took some new steaks, speaking of mistakes. <laughs> I was missing some steaks. So I took a few packs of new ones. Um, I always have this saying, we have a saying here in Newfoundland that uh, some things work for Newfoundland, but don't work. For, some things will work for Disneyland, but they don't work for Newfoundland. <laughs> That'll work at Disneyland, but it don't work in Newfoundland. Uh, light duty steaks, the, uh, the, the MSR hogs, I think they're called, those Y-shaped red ones. Not a prayer. The only steaks that really work well here in the uh, in Newfoundland are these bad boys. Big, heavy stainless steel. Uh, I guess they're stainless steel. These things. I've bent one over the years, and that was through stupidity. <laughs> uh, I didn't show it, but on the uh, on the trip to La Manche, I hammered one of these into a root deep down in the ground. Thought it was great. Hey, it's going to hold nice and solid. Till I tried to move it, and I twisted it up like a pretzel. I worked like a dog to get it out of the ground. Note to anybody who's at this, if you're hammering in a stake and you feel it going into a root, or rather wood under the ground, stop. <laughs> You'll never get it back out, man. Um, learned that the hard way. I did get my stake back. Didn't leave it there, but it was ruined. But that's the only one of these I've ever ruined. These things are great. Uh, the nickname for Newfoundland is The Rock, and there's probably 10 feet of topsoil at the most on top of pure bedrock here, man. So, driving stakes in the ground is uh, hit or miss. Literally, hit rock or miss rock, but everywhere you go, there's rocks, man. You gotta go in on an angle and let it find its own trail down through the rocks. And it takes a few tries, usually, to get the stakes in. 
jinxing myself now. I still got a couple more stakes that got to go in down to the hammock down there too. So wish me luck on that. Oh Lord, <laughs> I'm drenched again. I don't know if it's sweat or what. I think I'm sweating. No, oh. everything is a bit of a battle. Especially when you're working under the tarp in the rain, you know, it's just do the best you can, man. But I managed to get the underquilt and the underquilt protector on and stake in the two corners of the hammock. That was a lot of work. Uh, but that's another step in the right direction. It's 10 to 4. Rain picked up again here. This is a bit of a challenge. Um, the hood is starting to rip off of my jacket. Not cool. Trying to be careful hanging it up, but it's a, uh, yeah. One more thing to deal with, I guess. Bad day to lose the hood on your rain jacket. The beginning of three torrential days of rain. So yeah, to that. That's it, is what it is. I got a towel here somewhere, but I'm gonna go fishing through that dry bag right now, soaking wet. I'm just gonna sit here and uh, uh, just trying to air dry out the heater. Full 20 pounder of propane and four one pounders, so that'll work. Glasses are drenched. Sweat. Um, that's not bad. I'll just get the uh, gotta get the top quilt down now. Get the top quilt down. When I dry off, I don't think the rain's gonna hold up any more than this, so. Uh, need a table. <laughs> a few odds and ends, you know. Oh wait, I got a table. I got a table. There we go. Table. <laughs> now I'll go get the. Uh, I'll go get the Nemo Moonlander now shortly. That's not very hard to get. I don't think. I don't think. I don't know where that is. But I'm. Uh, I'm just gonna chill. Dry out. Not cold. Not cold. It's probably 15 degrees. Set up the uh, thermometer too. That's here too. <laughs> I'll dry off first a little bit. Ugh. But I don't know if you can tell by my shirt. UGQ Outdoors. <laughs> I said in the last video I woke up sweating in the middle of the night. Um, I swore up and down in that video the next thing I was going to buy was a 40 degree bandit. UGQ Bandit. Put my money where my mouth is. 40 degree, 40 degree UGQ banded is here with me. So, judging by the uh, temperature and the way that I'm sweating, I'm glad I got that. I got a real easy supper here for tonight. Just a bottle of mousse and a bag of rice. So, supper tonight should be easy. I got the uh, breakfasts and all that stuff here. And, um,. Whew, I'm a victim, man. I just got to chill out for a little while here. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> anyway, top quilt is in. And the uh, bug net's on. Squirrel. Missed him. My brother squirrel just ran across there. <laughs> but, uh, wow, it's pouring, man. Oh. oh, it's pissing. <laughs> it's just gonna keep spilling, man. Those squirrels don't seem to care, though. Yeah, buddy. 
Oh, it's pouring rain. I don't care. I'm just happy to be out camping, man. Happy to be here. Ain't no point in taking off the wet clothes. I still got stuff to do, things to be done. I don't know what, mind you. Now I got my uh, 10 after 4. Got a lot done in two hours here, brother. A few mosquitoes got in here. I killed off a couple. That was pretty good. Clam is doing its job. Tarp's doing its job. Everything down there seems nice and dry. Knock on plastic, it stays that way for three days. <laughs> oh, I'll sleep in that car, man, with a wet hammock. <laughs> oh, I hope that's not foreshadowing. So far, everything looks good. I got drip lines. I got drip lines. The doors are down. The underclub protector. Everything's looking cool down there. Bueno. Hopefully it uh, doesn't cool up underneath it or anything weird happens. Just thinking about Murphy's Law here now. What can usually does go around. <laughs> but I just got to dry out for a bit here, man. Oh, it's a fair bit of work, especially in the rain. rain jacket holds in as much sweat as it lets out, you know, it keeps out water. So it's a mixed blessing having a rain jacket. I don't think that hood's going to last. <laughs> not too happy with the hood. Yeah, not too happy with the whole wet skins thing, man. I got it on sale for like 70, 80 bucks. It was 80 bucks for sure. It was expensive. The pants ripped on me last year. The crotch ripped out of the pants. They didn't last very long. The inner liners ripped out of them. The pants were me, and uh, now the jacket is me. It's just tearing everywhere, man. Every seam in it is just junk. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, that's the way the pants went. The pants just tore just by looking at them twice, you know. Yeah, it's kind of sitting here having one of those I must be crazy moments. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is nothing, man. Like, it's supposed to be super hard rain tomorrow. 30 millimeters? I mean, this is nothing. This is like 5 to 10 millimeters they were calling for today. 35, 30 tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I guess you, uh, you ever questioned my conviction on camping. Yeah, I'm all about it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just sitting here watching the uh, watching the run off the tarp. Super happy I put the awning up. Um, just a lot of room to move around, and I can put my tar. I can put my uh, cooler outside. You know what I mean? Frees me up a lot. Um, just to be able to move around, man. Just not confined to the to the clam. I can go right out to the back of the car and back. Although those, uh, those bird-like mosquitoes that are buzzing around the tarp, buzzing around the uh, net, aren't really inspiring confidence in me going out there, but <laughs> yeah, you gotta deal with that, I guess. None in here, man. Yeah, a couple got in, there's a carpenter crawling across the ceiling up there. I don't know if you can see him, he's, he's right there. <laughs> A sow bug for you civilized people. Carpenters is what we always call them. Um, yeah. My mother had a wicked phobia of them.
Yeah, mother had a very big fear. That was like her only weird phobia. Wasn't afraid of heights, wasn't afraid of water, wasn't afraid of flying. <laughs> she was afraid of carpenters, sow bugs, terrified. I remember, uh, I don't know what, I think, I think she had a weird traumatic experience as a child where someone put one in her hair or something. But, um, I do recall one day sitting down watching the Discovery Channel and they were showing about trilobites. I don't know if you know the, the big, the big trilobite, uh, uh, prehistoric carpenter looking armadillo cross things that existed. And I made the mistake of showing her a trilobite, and uh, yeah, I remember her saying, "Yeah, I could have lived my life not knowing that that existed." Thank you, Daryl. <laughs> That's gonna make for a great nightmare tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she had my sense of humor. I have her sense of humor or something, but uh, she would have killed that long ago. She would not sit here with carpenters crawling across the ceiling. But anyway. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> like every time I turn the camera on. <sighs> yes. I'm going to try and stop doing that. That's just a stupid bad habit. I just went out and got a little bit of caloric intake here to tide me over. A Rice Krispie cookie. Rice Krispie square. We are experiencing a lull in the rain. 439. Um, just took the opportunity and brought the pillow and my uh, condensation catcher and my uh, hut boots. Probably not going to need them. It's pretty warm. And I uh, got the water bottle sitting there. Brought in my, uh, not sure if you can see that. I brought in my dry bag over there. Dry bag. Scott towels are super bonus. I brought in my snack bag. is where I've just found my Rice Krispie squares. <laughs> and I brought in the, uh, the cooler and my table. Need my Moonlander table and the stain of water that I'm going to finish. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's that. I'm, uh, in between dinner and supper now, I don't, uh, they say in Newfoundland where lunch is dinner and dinner is supper. That's, um, not sure what to do there right now. I'm probably just gonna let that Rice Krispie Square carry me to supper. And like I said, supper's pretty easy. Supper is just go get the, uh, Twin burner propane stove. I'm gonna boil some water to heat up my rice. That's, uh, downright diabetic introduced me to these things. Um, Basmati rice. You just boil the bag for three minutes. Delicious. Gotta love it. And he also downright diabetic bottled some mousse. Um, it's cooked, ready to go, heated up in the pan, mousse and gravy, looks a lot better when it's cooked than it does right now. Easy supper, uh, delicious supper. That's what we're going to do, we're going to open this up and uh, heat that up in the fry pan, boil that in a boiling pot of water, combine the two together and have a delicious supper with very minimal effort, because I am all about that right now. So far, this whole thing reeks of effort. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just came back. I, uh, I don't know if you can hear, but rain has stopped for a little while. 
So I took the opportunity to run down and uh, throw the, the rest of my things in the hammock, the lights and uh, stuff like that. It's not the best pitch. It's a little short. I don't think I went high enough up the trees, but it'll do. The bug net's just touching my face a little bit more than it usually does. Uh, Ridgeline tension's pretty good. A bit of carabiner on it just to take a little bit of slack out of it, but it's not bad. One twist on a carabiner is not too bad. I could have got away without it. Uh, set up the uh, the new UGQ top quilt zippered foot box. I just zipped that up and cinched it up and snapped it up and uh, pulled off my shoes, hopped in there and uh, trotted it out just a little bit, give her a little tester. Good, really good. I'm afraid I might be slightly damp. I don't feel damp, but you never know. So I didn't spend too much time in there. I just kind of hopped in. Sorry I didn't take you. Never thought on it until I was there that I forgot the camera. Mm. I took the... Um, I took one of my shine lines down for the ridge line of the hammock. I've really seen the benefit of it in the hammock. I usually just go down in the hammock with the headlamp on, do my thing, get myself ready for bed, and uh, turn off the headlamp and I turn on the overhead, the, the little EOS 2 that I got clipped onto the ridge line, and the hang time hook. So I'm, uh, I, brought the, uh, I brought the shine line down, I might try it out. I'm definitely going to put the crisscross on the ceiling here again, as I usually do. So I'm going to do that. And uh, it's closing in on six. It was ten after five. <laughs> ten after five, and the rain has stopped. So I'm going to get the uh, get the old Coleman twin burner in here and rearrange everything I got spread around in the uh, clam here. And get my... Uh, Moose, bottled moose and rice supper on the G.O. I'm not going to spoil the surprise. I was almost going to say what I got for the other two suppers, but you guys will see that as the video progresses, I'm sure. Anyway, I'll catch you when it's supper time. It's getting supper time. We're going to try and show you the setup. I know you guys have probably seen the Coleman Twin Burner stove before, but maybe not. In here, in here. Last time down, right now I went uh, hot tenting. We weren't sure if it was working correctly, so I bought a new regulator off of Amazon. New regulator, brand new tank of propane. What could possibly go wrong? I'm nobody's fool. I took the old regulator too. You never know. And I'm just going to make a little table for that thing. Here. That should be good. Let's hope that's the hardest part of it. Now my the bag I affectionately call the kitchen. kitchen bag I got a kettle we need a toaster we need the fry pan right here I got a lighter just came screaming out at me there's the fry pan here's the lighter here's a plate that is waiting for supper just like me if you guys can see, I bought the Tokes 1100 mil because it nests my old school 750 mil. And it came with a little fry pan. And I mean little, but it's, uh, it's a good lid for it. So, all right, we're gonna roll and boil going here. I'm just gonna take the rice. It doesn't need to be really completely submerged. I'm just going to keep track of my clock. I'm just going to 
not to put the lid on apparently. I'm just going to track in two minutes and I'll flip it over. Maybe another minute. I threw a little bit of water in the moose bottle and shook it around just to get every all the morsels out of there. I'm just going to boil that for a couple of minutes, flip it around, make sure the other end gets a little boiling. And then I'm going to, okay, maybe not, I'm just going to shut it off because it's over boiling. I'll sit it in the hot water for a couple of minutes. How's that? And then I'm going to throw it in here and let it come up to a, let it congeal with the moose. And you know, I'm not even dirting up a plate, man. I'm going to eat that right out of the, right out of the fry pan. I'll eat supper and do dishes all at the same time. Back in a minute. And we're going to call that a success. You just boil this bag for two minutes or microwave it for 60 seconds. So I think we've successfully warmed that up. And if it's not warmed up, it will be now in a minute. Because we're just going to put that in there. Throw that in the garbage. Pull this off of here. We don't need that going anymore. And I wish you had smell-o-vision. Moose is amazing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn off the propane. We're just going to mix this together until I feel it is a homogenous moose and rice conglomeration. <laughs> Let that basmati rice absorb some of that moose. All the water that I put in is going away. And that is an easy, delicious, stick to your ribs meal. Newfoundland moose. Just some uh, fatback pork in there, some onion, moose and basmati rice, and a little bit of water. Mmm. Easy, delicious supper for night one. Oh, supper was awesome. <clears throat> Fantastic. Um, dishes are done. Everything is cleaned up and put away. I was just watching a little uh, YouTube. I have no cell service here. I never have, never will. But I, um, I recently subscribed to YouTube. And uh, commercial free. And the ability to download some stuff. So I'm watching some downloaded hammock related <laughs> videos i got a ninja movie there and i got a few uh for some reason my history is kind of downloaded over the last few days so i got some videos i can watch i downloaded a few podcasts and i got youtube music i saved a few albums so i'll keep myself occupied for a little while here but it is 609 <laughs> 609 right now and uh, I just went out and did the dishes. It was absolutely beautiful. No rain. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it. It's starting to rain again. So uh, the temperature in here, I've been keeping it over out of the way. It's 12.9. Uh, it's about 13 degrees in here. If I kept it up here, it'd probably go up to 18. It's nice and toasty where I'm sitting here. And it's a uh, 10.0 outside. So it's, you know, not freezing, but not bad. So there's that. I put my sweater on because it's just going to get a little cooler as it gets darker. And uh, why wait till you're cold? Have a... Otherwise, status quo. Supper was great. 
and a little dessert later. I took a little, uh, I should have one now. <laughs> Where are this? Um, I saw one earlier. There's one. <clears throat> Delicious. Turkish delight with fries cocoa. I've been uh, really trying to steer clear of chocolate. My usual snacks at home are uh, grapes. <laughs> I eat quite a few grapes. But, um, well, these are a very guilty pleasure. I didn't like them. It was like Turkish delight with a Excellent tasting chocolate. Never liked them when I was young. Canadian Big Turk bar. Never liked it. <clears throat> Grew into these. And they're not a lot. You know, you just get that much. You just get a little, little piece. So, I like that. Turkish Delight. Yeah, just checking back in. It's exactly 7.30 right now. Supper was great. My dessert was fantastic. Just sitting here. Soaking it all in. A friend of mine asked me uh, yesterday when you're up camping, you know, what do you do to pass the time? I, uh, I don't know. I guess I watch the time pass. I um, feel very at peace. Very uh, comfortable inside my own head. Um, squirrels are singing. Birds are singing. Um, there was a light rain for quite a while here. It just stopped. Um, put on a couple of YouTube videos, turned off a couple of YouTube videos, listened to the, uh, listened to my surroundings. There's a foghorn gently blowing in the background up in Trapassi. Anyway, one thing I am grateful for on this trip, no wind. Practically breathless here. That's a bonus. Actually, it's breathless. There is zero wind right now. That is a bonus. Um, watch some of my older videos, man. This place can get pretty windy. If we had wind with this rain, it would be a whole different ball game right now. But um, I am looking forward to a night's sleep. Three nights sleep in the hammock under the tarp. Rain beating down. Today is just a prelude. Tomorrow it's supposed to really open up and uh, rain pretty heavy. So, so we're gonna deal with it. We'll have breakfast. We'll have coffees. We'll have breakfast. Then we'll have uh, lunch. Then we'll have a, uh, a nice supper. And that's just Tuesday. Then we got Wednesday. Then we're going to get up on Thursday. I'm in no rush to leave Thursday. I was thinking I'd stay till Friday, but... Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to come back on Thursday. Spend Friday at the house. Relaxing, showering, doing some odds and ends. And, uh... Haven't heard the five horns since. <laughs> well. well, it's uh, quite a nice break in the rain here. I figured uh, tomorrow and the next day is not going to be your break in the rain at all, so we'd have a little look at where we're living, how I'm living. Looks pretty cool, man. Eh? 
gotta say. Got the clam, got the hot gear wingman tarp. Propane in my water. A little roost here. And there's been a red squirrel hanging around here. Seems to be gone now, but the hatches are batting down on the old, <laughs> old, brand new. Dutch wear solid entry tarp. Gotta say, I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with it. Kind of getting a little bit of pooling going on here, but not too too severe. Mikasa. Pretty cool, gotta say. I think you heard a foghorn. Every time I try to listen to it. It's the first time I've had a tarp with internal pole mods. Um, it's a different beast, gotta say. Here's the many trips with it. Don't even bother to stake out the clam. There isn't a breath of wind, man. I got stakes, I got everything sitting in there, so. It's starting to rain again. Let's get back. Man, it is so nice in here. So uh, it's amazing how well this traps the heat. You don't realize it, you kind of get used to it sitting in here and then you go outside and you're like, wow, it's, uh, it's eight, eight and a half out right now. It's only showing 11.6, but I've got this thing sitting over here out of the way. You're just in this zone of heat from the heater, you know? And it's real nice, I gotta say. I just got my, uh, Got some sandals and socks on here. I decided to take off my my boots. Kind of work against you. And I think your feet start sweating, get a little damp. I've had some cold nights, cold feet, so just gonna let them dry right out here up against the big buddy heater. Past the time, eight o'clock right now. Another two hours. 10 o'clock might be bedtime for me. I've been staying up a little later this last few days, so. 10 o'clock, 10.30, maybe something like that. A couple of melatonins and uh, retire. I'd say it's going to be a wet morning. A wet night and a wet morning, so. I'll definitely bring the boots down when I uh, when I go to bed. Gonna want them for the morning. I take the rain jacket down with me too and just have it there. But, uh, I don't know if you hear the foghorn. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. No wind and heavy rain is gonna be quite a lullaby. I'm pretty well. Pretty looking forward to going to sleep down there in that underneath that tarp in heavy rain. And it's warm enough, it's the perfect temperature, man. I did bring my ha hammock gear 
minus 18, minus 20 Celsius top quilt. There were no Newfoundland. I'd rather be looking at it than looking for it. But I do have the lighter duty five degree, 40 Celsius UGQ banded in the, in the, the Dream Hammock Sparrow down there right now waiting for me. It's starting to get a little darker. Last night it was, uh, there was daylight in the sky after nine o'clock last night, so the year is moving on. 2024 is rolling by, so that's pretty cool. Still cool in the nights. Probably get down to two degrees, maybe somewhere in that vicinity tonight. I'll take my sweater down with me. Uh, my hut boots, my... Uh, my down hut boots are in the hammock down there too, in case I need them. I got my balaclava down there, which I'm definitely gonna use. I did not take the uh, the down hood. I think that's a little overkill. I did take the uh, condensation catcher. Gotta use it, gotta have it, gotta love it. And I got the bug net on down there, so. Should be a good night. Got the X going. <laughs> Got the X going. It's uh, one minute after nine right now. Um, I'm winding down. I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm gonna call it a little early. Nine o'clock, still a little bit of daylight in the sky, but I don't know if you can make that out on camera. There's a little bit of daylight left, but I'm just sitting here enjoying the propane heat. Lost in quiet contemplation for a while. Get everything packed up and put away. I think uh, I'm going to pack myself up and put myself away here now. Talk to you in the hammock. How's that? And here we are. Takes a little, uh, a little bit of finagle in to get in here. <laughs> I'm used to getting in on the. Uh, passenger side <laughs> but uh, when I set the tarp up I set it up with the side entry on the driver's side <laughs> on the left side of the hammock and it was raining pretty heavy so I did not feel like uh, switching it around where's the camera right there. so yeah I didn't feel like switching it around so so I decided I would leave it the way it is and get in on the other side. It's just a habit. I've got the uh, UGQ Bandit ready to snuggle me in. <laughs> no rain. It's a pretty quiet night. It's, uh, I took my watch off, but it's just after 9, 10 after 9, quarter after 9. Took a few melatonins. I'm going to be melatonin out here now. <laughs> anyway, I will uh, I'll touch base. Touch base with you guys in the morning. Or maybe throughout the night. We shall see. Day one down. <laughs> see you Tuesday morning. Night, everyone. Good morning. Nah, not really morning. It's uh, it is six o'clock. I uh, slept awesome. Rain has been pretty light. I gotta say it's it's raining, but not as heavy as I thought it was gonna be. I'm sure that's gonna change as the morning progresses. But uh, 
I just had to get up. Excuse me. <laughs> I just got up. I woke up around 5.30, maybe a little earlier. Yeah, lied here in... Uh, lied here in... Uh, disbelief. Denial that I had to take use the bathroom. Yeah. Came to grips with it a few minutes ago. And I got up, went up, checked on the clam, made sure everything was uh, still cool up there. Uh, yeah, I messed up. I, <laughs> all I took was frozen water on my big water. I didn't take many water bottles that were actually drinkable. So I left one out last night to thaw. And I, uh, so I hopped up, used the bathroom. Uh, the painkiller. I guess the weather is switching. I had a little bit of a headache this morning too, so just took a couple of painkillers, got a drink of water. I'm back here. <laughs> the mosquitoes are in full force. This mosquito net is definitely doing wonders. Um, but I just came back. This is a little after six right now. I'm gonna get myself situated and Try to catch another. Hmm. Probably catch another hour or so. So, hovering around eight degrees. So there's that. It's kind of warm. UGQ Bandit was perfect. No sweating. None of that stuff. Um, perfect rating for this. And the rest of the summer, and like I said, I got the uh, the hammock gear that I can use when it gets cold. And if it gets crazy cold, <laughs> I can always layer the two of them one inside the other. So that was the plan. And then I'll tuck in another hour, hour and a half, maybe. Well, it's uh, just after eight o'clock. Oh, the rain is such a lullaby, man. <laughs> I could stay here. I'm forcing myself to get up. Holy crap. Oh. Sleep number one did not disappoint. But I can't stay here all day, man. Got a bag of coffee, I got a drink. <laughs> Let's go get the kettle on, hey? Oh, this morning is coming around already. <laughs> Wind is picking up a little bit. A couple of little gusts every now and then. Kettle's almost boiled. Coffee's loaded up with coffee, instant espresso, a couple of sugars. Got some coffee cream waiting. And yeah, 8.0. I'll be back in a minute. Do I look like a happy camper? <laughs> I should. Coffee's good. Mm. I'll be honest, I got out of using the uh, espresso at home back on regular coffees at the house so this is a treat I missed the all amount pro mud should make it more often um, mm. and an open bottle of coffee cream is a bit of a pain in the butt it's well well worth it <laughs> the luxuries of car camping speaking of that I don't know if you can probably tell but there's no secret I've uh, slipped out of shape. <laughs> Not that I ever really was in shape or anything, but I was doing pretty good last summer. I uh, working on losing weight, but work put me on the, uh, the evening 12 to 8 shift, and uh, I was just wasn't able to walk anymore, man. I wasn't able to go for my evening walks, so... Uh, 
slipped back into old habits on top of that and here I am. Well, I've been trying the last uh, three weeks, month, maybe last month. I've been walking the pit trail again and uh, trying to eat a little better. You wouldn't say it by this camping trip, but trust me, when I'm home, I don't, uh, I don't eat a full bottle of boost or anything like that. And I don't eat chocolates, Coca-Cola and all that stuff out of my diet. Could be better. I mean, I still use coffee cream and stuff. I'm sure that's just a glass of fat, but you know. I'm, uh, I'm making strides. I'm making effort. Wind is gusting. Nothing crazy like it has been up here in the past, but and it is uh, moderate rain. I wouldn't call it heavy rain. Nothing crazy. Puddles outside the door are kind of in check. They don't seem to be creeping close or anything. Um, man, what a sleep. The uh, UGQ Bandit. UGQ Bandit. It's a 40 degree Fahrenheit. It's about 5 degrees Celsius. No overstuffing, none of that. Zippered foot box. A whole different beast than my, uh, my extreme winter hammock gear. Burrow. But uh, I needed something lighter, man. I'd been, um, I'd woke up in the sweats a few nights and that's no fun. Um, it's just an extra pain in the ass you don't need to deal with when you're out here at this, you know. It was overkill. And it's great for the winter, but most of my camping is actually in the spring and summer and fall. A little bit in the winter, but you know. Don't get me wrong, I've had a good many nights when the burrow was completely comfortable, but. I've had enough nights where I get a micro sweat, feel damp on the chest, and of course in the last uh, last camping video there, four days in Chance Cove, yeah, I woke up soaked. Not only does it suck, it's not good for the under for the top quilt theater. Down is a pain in the ass to wash, so I don't want to be sweating in it. So anyway, uh, yeah, I bit the bullet. The winter and bought a um, bought the burrow about the UGQ Bandit underground quilts and um, so happy. It's got a lot of features that the other one doesn't. It's got this dynamic tension control which runs down the whole length of the under quilt. It's a bit of shock cord in there that you can pull that kind of keeps it tucked in around your back. I did not think on even engaging it last night and never had a problem without it. It's got a um, zippered foot box, so I can actually fold the thing out like a uh, like a blanket, which I've done at the house. It's quite nice. And it's got a storage sack kind of built into the bottom. It's hard to describe, but down where your feet go, there's an extra pouch. So if you wanted to stick some wet clothes or you wanted to take my sweater off and not have my sweater be freezing cold in the morning, I can stuff it down in that. And it's an extra layer of insulation on your feet and it stays warm in the morning when you so <laughs> brilliant man and it acts as a stuff sack for the uh for the underquilt it can stuff into itself kind of so it's pretty neat i gotta say it's a different completely different top quilt was i calling it an underquilt top quilt and it dawned on me this morning too the um i don't think i will ever have to wash my underquilt it never contacts your body. It's on the outside of the hammock. How could it get, you know, it could get dirty from the ground or something like that, but likely it's never going to get smelly or sweaty or anything like that. Um, I am to the point, though, I think I may have to wash the hammock. Just when I took it out of the pouch the, today and the first lie in it, I kind of noticed a little background smell of man. <laughs> nothing crazy it's not disgusting or anything and it looks clean as a whistle but I think over the next few days now when I get back I'm just going to fill up the tub with a little bit of laundry detergent a little bit of soap dishwashing detergent sorry in the bathtub and uh, give her a swish give her a rinse hang it up down in the basement off the hooks and let it dry beauty of my wide open basement I've got I got a couple of hooks up in the ceiling 
uh, a couple there for the tarp and a couple there for the uh, hammock I got a couple there for the wingman tarp a couple there that I made up so I can hang everything up down there I've got hooks in the ceiling that correspond to different gear hang it up let it dry and that, uh, that's a super bonus and having the trunk of the car there I'm not too concerned about tearing stuff down wet but supposed to clear up today is Tuesday supposed to be heavy rain today the heaviest of it is supposed to be today tomorrow is supposed to be sort of like it was Monday showers and um, Thursday supposed to be best kind I'm not calling for anything and it's really not calling for wind we gusts in 28 30 and I'd say that's about what we have right now so and that's still not gonna stake in the guy out on the clam yeah. I don't want to go out packing around and get wet. I'm just uh, I'm just gonna huddle up here on the big buddy and drink coffee for the first little while. Anyway, things might change later. Who knows? <laughs> I'll check in with you after. I'm going for coffee round two. A little breezy, but uh, pretty dry, man. Don't seem to be any rain at all here today, so. I got a feeling that could change on a dime though, but <laughs> what do I see? Cafe, ole, ole, ole. Cafe, ole. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd talk about my throne. <laughs> I've uh, <clears throat> abandoned ship on my Helinox chair swivel after breaking it twice. I uh, finally conceded to the fact that it is not rated for a man of my stature. It's <laughs> the nicest way I can word that, but yeah, I'm too fat for it. So I went out and I bought this uh, Woods brand. Woods is a kind of a Canadian tire brand, I think. I don't know if you can get it anywhere else. Um, it's got this little side table, and man, <laughs> star of the day so far is that side table. Jeez, I use that for everything. It's uh, extremely handy. Chair is rated for 400 pounds, so if I start breaking this thing off, we got a major problem. Um, yeah. I got a, also from Canadian Tire is just a sit pad that they uh, thermal insulated sit pad that I was sitting on, but I've moved it to the small of my back and I'm sitting on my Thermarest Z seat. Got my uh, piece of puzzle mat there on the floor for my feet. And they're quite a mess spread out around me. And anyone that's keen-eyed might spot this evening's supper. Thawn out in the corner over here. Yeah, buddy. Some pork medallions. Also, this, uh, this tent doesn't have a lot of storage. But, um, I'll make do. <laughs> it's not really a tent, is it? But the, uh, the clam shelter... Doesn't have any storage pockets anywhere in it, so you kind of got, got to get creative or spread everything around the floor like a savage. Got the Apple Watch is sitting on a uh, charger. As a matter of fact, I would say that's almost charged. And it's 10.02 right now. This is the, uh, this is my tripod old tripod that I've had for quite a while and I bought a little iPhone holder to, uh, to mount to it. Garbage bag which I make sure that I put in the uh, make sure I put that in the car when we go to bed and it's 10 something inside 7 something outside but again it's more than 10. It's more than 10 inside it's just where I'm sitting over here is quite warm. I'm going to leave that out because another hour, I'd say 11 o'clock, is going to be breakfast time. So.
Touch base with you then. Ah, I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> Just had uh, finished my second coffee, did some dishes, cleaned up the coffee and that, getting ready for breakfast here now. It's uh, 20 after 11. And just had a shower. By that I mean some dude wipes and a uh, Colgate Wisp. <laughs> Brand new though. Mouth feels clean, wash my face and hands and all that stuff. So good for another day now. Cleaned up my hands. Good to handle bacon and do some breakfast. So catch you when breakfast. Catch you when breakfast is cooking. Oh, we got the makings. The makings of a breakfast. Some bacon and some hash browns and some eggs. I can't film and listen to music at the same time, but we've been rocking Chet Atkins' greatest hits here, so. <laughs> Living the good life. 6.6 .6 outside. Not in here, I think. <laughs> it's beautiful. It smells beautiful. Progress is being made. A couple of egg in the holes. Bacon hash browns. That'll be killer. <laughs> Living like a king. Egg in the holes, hash browns, and bacon. <laughs> how good do you have it? Well, how good was that? Delicious. All these dishes cleaned up, everything is done. Um, just sitting here relaxing now, listening to a bit of Chet Atkins. I tried to download some music on YouTube Music, but part of it didn't download, I don't know. I got a Jerry Reed Greatest Hits and a Chet Atkins Greatest Hits. If you were going to be stuck for a few days with only two albums to listen to. <laughs> Put me on a desert island with Chet Atkins' greatest hits. I think I'd be okay. But anyhow, uh, that's what I've been doing. Soaking up a bit of heat from the buddy. And, uh, yeah, enjoying my Tuesday. Enjoying my breakfast. Coffee was great. Supper's thawed out and getting ready for that. But, uh... It's going to be a while. It's just after 12 now, five minutes after 12. So, um, rock and shit on the, uh, on the JBL Clip 4. Uh, I really like that thing. It's got some good bass to it. Nice, I've said it before, it's got a nice ratio of bass to treble. It's not bassy, it's not trebly. It's good fidelity. Somebody's coming. A little bit of traffic going back and forth. It's uh, it's the weekend before May 24th, so <clears throat> next weekend this place will be on wheels, as they say. This will be blocked with people and generators and all that good stuff next weekend. I usually come, last few trips I've came up here the weekend after May 24th. Eh, this weekend my schedule allowed it, so I came up the weekend before. I might come the weekend after, but I sure as hell I'm not coming next weekend. <laughs> I've got some plans next weekend. I got a show to play, so I'm gonna lay low for the May 2 4. And uh, yeah, might come up the weekend after. Might come up early June. See what happens. Yeah, she's been rocking and rolling, windy. I, uh, just went out and tightened up a couple of steaks there and I added three to the clam just as I was setting the camera up to film this little clip <laughs> wow the gust hit the whole thing just shifted so pretty glad I just did what I did so there you go I think my pole is a little bit off center now but everything seems to be quite a bit tighter and I wasn't calling for wind Again, the uh, weather forecast in uh, weather forecast in Newfoundland and Labrador is just a vague estimation. Vague estimation. Sorry, estimation. <laughs> yeah, just a, a rough outline of what it could be. 
Winds calm, gusting to 60. Variable precipitation. High of plus 20, low of minus 1. <laughs> you get used to hearing it, and all of a sudden you're reading it like, what are you forecasting, man? <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, we had yesterday. <laughs> now we got no rain. They were calling for 35 millimeters of rain today. We have none. They were calling for 28 kilometer hour winds. We've probably got 60. So there you go. Oh, I just went for a little drive. <laughs> I just drove up the road. The cell service. The cell service is probably 15 minutes drive away from here, creeping along a dirt road. Um, centered the car up a little bit better between those lines so it stops getting snagged in the trunk. I uh, have one missed text message from Hammock Gear. 25% <laughs> sale on at Hammock Gear for those of you who are interested. Otherwise, didn't miss anything, so good. It wasn't raining the entire time as soon as I backed the car and man, this came on like a switch. <laughs> Turned on like a faucet. But uh, yeah, pouring rain right now for a little bit. Um, I went back and I checked the campsite where me and Dan right camped the last time in the hot tent. There's a fire ring set up there. Somebody's been there since us. And uh, I went down to check the parking lot down there. There's one car and three trailers, but no vehicles by them. So I'm assuming those trailers are nobody in them. And I'm thinking the guy in the car is probably going down trouting, fishing, trouting. And the garbage can down there is torn apart, man. And there's garbage strewn around. I'm thinking, what the hell could have done that? Very unlikely that there's a bear around here. I'm not ruling it out. I mean, not impossible, but I don't know. Looks like a bear to me, man. It looks like a bear did it, but I cannot see there being a bear on the Avalon down here this far on the coast. Maybe something pretty tasty in that garbage to attract a bear this far east, man. I don't know. Could have been. Discovered a leak. Saw a couple of drops of water down here. I wasn't sure. But something right here is leaking. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this was the corner I found a leak on before and I seen some look. Did I just see something drop. There's a leak somewhere here. Something's leaking around there, man. I'll play, play the video back. I'm sure I just saw something drip. Uh, right there. Huh. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's pouring water in or anything, but there's a couple of little leaks. I'll get a nice day out in the yard and I'll review this little bit of video and I'll, uh, get this coming back, look at that. Right there, seems to be a leak. I'll straighten it up. Hmm. <laughs> back in the muck. Ah, it's, uh, 2.30. I'm, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to do a little reading. Took a different book with me this time. Yeah, buddy. I've, uh, I've been wanting to read this book since I got into hammocking. It is a much thicker book than I anticipated. <laughs> um, I've skimmed through it a little. There's a lot of... Every page I get into here seems to have some good information on it. 
Um, so I decided I'm just killing time till supper anyway. So I'll shut off the propane and uh, climb in underneath the uh, UGQ Bandit for a little while. Listen to the rain on the tarp. I don't know if you can see on the uh, on the side of the screen. There's a little distortion. I've been noticing that. I think it's my screen protector has got a very small chip in it, and I think it's interfering with the uh, camera. I don't want to take my screen protector off, so. Not my aura that you're seeing. It's <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's the little crack in the screen protector, but either way. Yeah, I'll lie back in there, read a little bit of Derek Hansen's Ultimate Hang, updated and expanded. <laughs> uh, just a couple of hours. I'm not going to nappy or anything, I hope. I'm going to try and get up around five. And get a uh, good supper happening then, so touch base with you after this. <laughs> yeah, reading time was a fail. <laughs> my hands get cold, man. I put my hands underneath the blankets, and uh, yeah, it never, never works out well. I didn't sleep. I don't think I slept. I, uh, I don't think so. Ugh. Nothing wrong with it. That's what we came here for. Rest and relaxation. But. Maybe I did sleep. I don't think so though. It's quarter to five right now. Yeah, the time I get myself up out of here and uh. Get the heat back on the go. It's going to be close to supper time. Start cooking supper anyway. Get up out of the bed. <laughs> Get supper on the go. Come on. You think this is a vacation? <laughs> supper time. New toy alert. New toy alert. <laughs> yeah, this is for supper number two and probably supper number three. The Napoleon Travel Q280. <laughs> uh, it takes a propane cylinder. Or I can hook it up to the uh, to the same hose that the Mr. Mr. Heater is hooked up on there. Uh, warming up. Oh, she's nice. I sprayed it down with a little bit of Pam grilling. And we are going to get grilling. I got some baby potatoes and I've got two pork medallions. Oh, supper in the making. <laughs> A little potato salad to go with it too, so. Touch base when we're cooking. We're approaching go time. That's going to be enough. Turn you down. Worcestershire sauce. Guess that's why you call it. Oh, yeah. And 
I'll never go around with a little bit of Montreal steak. I think you're almost flippable right now. We shall see. Oh, glory. That came out as good as I thought it would. Roasted potatoes. They're all done. And the uh, pork medallions. Worcester sauce. Barbecue sauce. And just a little bit of Montreal steak spice. Delicious. Oh man, it's delicious. <clears throat> oh, wicked. Done to perfection, man. Perfect. Well, I'll be honest, <laughs> I never bought these potatoes. <clears throat> I usually buy just regular russet potatoes and slice them into discs, slice them into big steaks and, and grill them. And these are a winner, man. Winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Pork chop dinner. Well, what a feed. <laughs> that was an awesome supper. Not going to lie, man. Those potatoes, winner for sure. We'll have those again and again until I'm sick of them. <laughs> As I tend to do with most of my food. Um, well, I, well, I saved a few for. I uh, seem like too many, man, but... Um, Earth fresh yellow baby potatoes. It's good to be left in the dark. Earth fresh light blocking bags help protect the potatoes from green. They were in the dark. They're going back in the dark now. <laughs> Speaking of the dark, it's uh, 555. <laughs> it's getting there, man. I'm just going to let the barbecue cool all the way down. Speaking of cooling down, yeah. Propane bottles. I've noticed that with the barbecue, man, when you start running it at a low temperature and just finishing things off, the propane bottle turns into a snowball. Such is life, I guess. Been here rocking Jerry Reed. Boom. I shut off the JBL. I don't know why I feel the need to imitate it every time I shut it off. Yeah, buddy. A little bit of iced tea. And that's it, man. Cuddle up by the uh, by the buddy heater. It's cold. Five degrees. Five point nine. This is eight point three over there. I came up after my uh, not a nap in the hammock. <laughs> It was actually colder inside here than it was outside. Outside was showing six degrees. Inside here was showing like four. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was starting to heat on, man. But uh, the heat plus the barbecue plus the feed. <clears throat> Pretty good shape here now, brother. Pretty good shape, not going to lie. Anyway, that's it. 
Supper number two out of the way. Rain is staying away. Winds are calmed down pretty manageable here now. I say as a little gust comes through, but no, nothing compared to what it was earlier. Pretty decent, gotta say. Touch base with you later. I was just sitting here watching a little bit of a movie and uh, this raining pretty heavy there now it was quiet all evening man this just came on like out of nowhere it's lightening up now but man it was pouring just a second but, uh, such a ninja movie ninja with scott adkins man it's not bad Loves me a good ninja movie, I do. But, uh, yeah. Watched, just recently finished watching the first season of House of Ninjas on uh, Netflix. That was deadly. Very good. Uh, coming right off the heels of Shogun, which was also fantastic. I like the first, uh, the old series from the 80s. I watched that too. I think I've watched about every ninja movie there is. <laughs> but, um, yeah. This isn't as much rain as I thought it would be. It's uh, 10 minutes after 7 right now. Starting to get a little dimmer. Winds are lightened up. The rain is back with a vengeance. Oh, man, 5.0 right now. Ah. If it rains heavy again like that, I'll click you back on. <laughs> well, Ninja with Scott Adkins was a good movie. Just call him Ninja. A weird. Free on uh, YouTube. I downloaded it. Glad I did. Pretty decent. But it is 10 minutes to 9. I just took the uh, the nightly melatonin and heartburn pill. <laughs> yeah, no need in staying up. I'm, uh, I'm going to shut the heater off right now and go down to the hammock. Meet you down there. Exactly nine o'clock. <laughs> <sighs> Good day. Had an awesome supper. Weather wasn't too, too bad. The uh, rain came and went as cold. It's five degrees, maybe. I'm still rocking the UGQ, you can tell the UGQ by the orange inside. The hammock here is black inside. But, um, all good. I'm just, uh, in the process of shutting everything down here. And it's a bit of a process. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Night time is calling. This is a hammock trip, so. Hammock it is. Anyway, day two, Tuesday's done. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Another day and another night here. Hopefully the weather improves tomorrow. If not, Thursday's supposed to be pretty decent. Well, uh, hopefully we can pack it up Thursday in the, uh, not in the rain. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's not rain. That is, uh, water falling out of the trees. It's very heavy mist. Kind of foggy out there right now, so. So, yeah. Anyway, folks, good night. I'll see you in the daylight.
a good Wednesday morning. Hey, it's pouring. <laughs> it's been pouring heavy since probably four o'clock. Um, it is 20 minutes to eight. <laughs> oh, I slept in again. Slept in good. Oh, man. Condensation catcher is damp. Man, it's biting them up right now. It was pouring heavy all morning. Oh. Good sleeps. But. Time to get up. Time to get up and get a coffee on the GO. Feels a little bit warmer. Left the, left the old temperature gauge. Thermometer is up in the, up in the clam. Eh, I'm gonna make a move and get out of here. See you up in the clam in a minute. Kettle is on and it is not yet quite eight o'clock. <laughs> up early this morning. Got some uh, some puddles forming out there. But. Rain's holding up here right now, and the wind is dead calm again, so that's good. I figured I uh, came up again this morning, and it was warmer outside than inside. Of course, I've got the temperature thing inside the hammock, so <laughs> it was 10 degrees inside the hammock where I was sleeping, and under the bug net, it was 7 degrees up here when I got up. It's starting to trade places now. The hammock is going down to 9.8. And this is up to 8.6, so Big Buddy is kicking out some heat. Propane's kicking out a little bit of heat, too. So, yeah, that's what's happening with my temperature. Anyway, I'll be back when I'm... Anyway. <laughs> I'll be back when I'm caffeinated. I'm not myself yet. I shut the camera off. She kicked in heavy. A couple of little leaks in the clam are starting to be a little bit of a problem. So we're gonna have to deal with it. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but it is uh it is bucketing down out there right now, brother. Yeah, heavy rain is the name of the day. Heavy rain and coffee. <laughs> In my morning stupor I forgot my Apple Watch. Not a big deal, I guess. I'll live without that. But it's uh, coffee number one. Mm. Delicious. So worth it to bring coffee cream if you got a cooler and you got a car. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind a little coffee whitener. And I don't mind... Uh, I don't mind Old Faithful when I'm camping either, man. If I'm hiking, backpacking or something, those are awesome. They're a really good, reasonable facsimile of a coffee. <laughs> coffee and cream and sugar and everything all ready to go. But it's uh, almost 10 degrees in here now. 
I'm dropping out there, so. Actually, it's up to 9.3 out there, so. It's not a cold day. Fortunately, the wind is pretty much breathless. I can see the tarp moving a little bit out there, but nothing major. Speaking of tarps, man, that Dutch wear, the Dutch wear gear banded Xenon side entry tarp. Awesome. Awesome. Not a leak. Never shifted, never stretched with all that water, never got saggy anywhere. It, um, the two spreader poles inside give you a lot of room. I can get out of the hammock and kind of stand up next to it. Not stand up, but crouch next to it, put my jacket on. and I don't need to duck under the tarp. I can just pull that zipper up, knock a bit of water off of the uh, overhang flap there, the porch flap. That's a godsend, man. That's awesome. Uh, one of my camping trips recently, I didn't mention it on the video, but I got up in the middle of the night. Got up in the middle of the night to take a pee. And I think I took my balaclava off. And I got out of the hammock, ducked underneath the side of the tarp, you know. I'm lazy, I don't use the doors all the time. I guess I should, but hey, I just duck under the edge of the tarp, especially when it's not raining. It was winter time, it was snow. Might have been the trip when me and Downright were up. He was sleeping up there, I was sleeping down here. But I ducked out under the edge of the tarp, did my business, and as I'm getting back in, I notice sitting on the side of my tarp is my fleece balaclava. Well, how did that get there? It must have been on my back. And when I ducked under the tarp, it hooked and caught and let anyway. I was like, you know what? I need a side entry tarp with a zipper in it. I remember lying there going back to sleep just daydreaming that that would be so much better. And it is so much better. <laughs> Though I should keep track of my Bella Clava better than that, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, win for the Dutchware banded Xenon side entry tarp. Also figured I'd mention that uh, I'm pretty sure there is not another soul in this park. It's Wednesday the week before May 2 for a weekend. Anybody who doesn't know, May 24th weekend is the Victoria Day weekend in Canada. I haven't heard any cars. Uh, there was one vehicle down there yesterday and like I said, I think that guy was down trouting. And he left. He left and drove up out of there. Pretty sure we got this whole place to ourselves. Um, there is one, there's three or four campers down there. Yeah, other than that, it's uh, pretty barren. I see my problem here. There's an over. There's a flap that's supposed to be down over that, so that's not happening. Ah, uh -huh, look at that. Well, that's an issue. I'm gonna have to get out and pin to that right now, make sure that's tucked in under its flap. I'll be right back. And that's much better. I uh, just went out and braved the rain. <laughs> I shifted the, shifted the Velcro patches around a little bit and got that to cover up. That's one off the to-do list. I had to move my chair out from the wall because there's a drip that's coming down over here now right behind me. The drip in the corner is still dripping in the corner. <laughs> and the drip in this corner as well. Anyway, one more day. I don't think we'll drown in here. We'll be all right. <laughs> Yeah, man, it is pouring. <laughs> I got that problem solved. That's tucked in where it should be. Checked out the other ones are good. I moved my chair out from the wall a little bit to avoid. There's a, there's a few leaks. Looks like we're going to have to hit this thing. Set it up in the backyard. And I'm just going to go around all the perimeter and around all those brown corner patches. 
All the perimeter seams. Main middle of it doesn't seem to be leaking. I'm just gonna seam seal the hell out of it. Mix up some seam sealer and uh, you mix that with mineral spirits. Mineral spirits and seam sealer, little brush. Those foam brushes from Canadian Tire. And yeah, seam seal the hell out of this thing. Let me skin it up my sleeves. It's actually pretty warm in here, man. It's 9.0 in here and 8.8 .8 out there. Comfy. 9.0 over there. It's probably 15, 20 right here where I'm sitting in the, in the blast of the heater. Yeah, pouring rain. Hopefully, uh, Mother Nature gets all this out of her system today. I'm glad this ain't Thursday. If this was Thursday, I think I'd seriously contemplate staying till Friday. It can't rain for a week straight, can it? <laughs> Coffee number two. It is a steady mist. Rain. It's somewhere between a mist and a light rain. Have a look. I don't know if you can see it, but... Just steady misting out there. Heavy rain. Light rain, I mean, but when it's not raining, it's constantly raining. <laughs> I was just sitting here boiling the kettle for coffee, too, and I had on a video for uh, the Delta Flow Eco 2. It's a device I've been daydreaming about getting. They are kind of pricey. Well, they're cheaper than the equivalent of a Jackery. Blue Eddy. I've been looking at something like that. Nice to have it at the apart at the house for uh, for a backup in case the power goes. Really nice to take on camping trips like this. Don't get me wrong, I run minimal electrical devices when I'm out here, and so far I make uh, I make it through on a couple of twenty thousand milliamp power banks. Um. Still got something left in one and a full second one there with me, so nothing to get through four or five days on two of those power banks. But and I've got a solar panel, I've got an anchor solar panel that can theoretically charge them. Though you wouldn't have been getting much solar the last few days up here, but anyway, uh, no, I've got it in my cart on Amazon the EcoFlow Delta 2. I like it, it's uh, it can take two, um solar panels uh, I've got the bundle in my cart right now about 1800 bucks I think for it it's like 1399 or something 1300 for it for the EcoFlow 2 power bank another 18 or 1900 is almost two grand if you get it with the solar panel 220 watt solar panel a little cheaper if you get a hundred watt solar panel and again, it can take two of those. They're like $8.99 on their own for the solar panel. And it can take an expansion battery. There's a, another battery that can go with it that doubles its power storage capacity. And I just saw in the video, there's even a max battery that can add 2,000, an extra 2,000. I think you get like 3,000 watt hours of storage capacity or something like that. Don't quote me on that, but... So it's nice because it's expandable down the road. You don't need to buy it all in one shot. I think if I was to just get the power unit and the one solar panel, that would be a nice start. Still finding two grand to drop on a power bank as a, <laughs> you know, it's doable. I just got a plan for it. And I've got other things I want. To be honest, uh, between you and me and the tent pole out there, I, uh, I'm almost paid off on the Honda right now. The Honda Civic doesn't owe me any money anymore, so kind of debating 
trading it in and getting something a little more suited for camping trips. I wasn't really doing this when I bought the Honda back in 2018. Life changes, your vehicle should change, so. Toying the idea around of a Ford Transit, to be honest. Not gonna camperize it. I, I'd like to get the passenger version, to be honest. So I could put the seats in and load up some music equipment when we go on the road. I can tote the band and all our equipment and drum sets and amplifiers and PA system and the band. And if I want to do a camping trip, I can take all the seats out and make it into like a metal tent. I don't want to camperize it like people do with these overlanding and van life and all that. I don't really want to do that because I don't want all my camping gear attached to the van. I, I'll set up in there. I'll set my chair and my table and my cooler just like this, man. I'll set up exactly what I got here inside the van, you know. But at least then I can take it out and make it into a, a van. Or I could have it here and, you know, if worse came to worse and it got really stormy right now, like it did in La Manche and Hurricane Earl a few videos ago, a good few videos ago, but I could always, instead of having to abandon and leave the campsite, I could have just tore everything down, put it in the back of the van in a hurry, just throw it in the van. I don't need to be as fussy as packing it in the trunk of the car. And I could have just set a pad up and a sleeping pad and a pillow and slept in the van, like I said, like a big metal tent, so... There, that's my wish list. That's what I'm thinking about here now while I'm drinking my second coffee, just daydreaming on some big ticket items. Two big ticket items, definitely the, uh, the EcoFlow Delta II with a solar panel and maybe an expansion battery. You're talking about $3,000, $3,500 for all that. And a Ford Transit fan, you're talking about fifty six grand. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'll do a Patreon. If you want to Patreon me $60,000, that'd be some cool videos. <laughs> yeah. Dream the impossible dream, Daryl. You didn't think we did a camping trip without a guitar, did you? <laughs> this is a different guitar. This is a Gretsch. Whoa. Can't show you that, apparently. Here we go. It's a Gretsch Honey Dipper. Which is a um, stylo resonator, basically. It's a biscuit resonator with a biscuit piece in here. Um, made out of a bell brass. And um, has a very unique sound. Especially when you play it with a, a slide like this. I've got a tune that I think is a little appropriate given the, uh, the climate and the environment here and hope you enjoy this one. You better come on in my kitchen You 
better come on in my kitchen. It's gonna be raining at dawn. Mm, can't you hear the wind howl? Oh, can't you hear that wind howl? You better come on in my kitchen. It's gonna be raining at Woman gets in trouble, everybody throws it down. Looking for her good friend, he can't be found. You better come on. In my kitchen, it's gonna be raining at dawn. You better come on in my kitchen. It's gonna be raining at Well, it's warm, it's foggy, the rain stop, winds are calm, that means mosquitoes, <laughs> tons of them. Um, Mr. Buddy is shut off. Yeah, I got the heater turned off, it's uh, 10.5 outside and 12.8 inside. Looking nice. Uh, getting breakfast time now. It is uh, around 11 o'clock. Breakfast it is. I am gearing up for some uh, some French toast. Not a lot. Only scrambled up two eggs and a bit of milk. And I think two slices of bread. So keep it light this morning. Still got the breakfast to go for tomorrow, so. Yeah, butter. <laughs> Delicious. French toast. Keeping it simple this morning. Well, breakfast was delicious. I made an executive decision that uh, it's 11.30. Why not one more coffee for the road? One more cup of coffee before I go into the valley below. Well, that was fantastic. I was just making my coffee and a, a car went by. So, somebody else here, two dudes in a little black car like mine. Not sure, probably fishing, probably sightseeing. But, uh, they were probably on one of those trailers down there, I don't know. By the way, there's somebody here. <laughs> uh, turned the heater on its lowest setting. Don't really need it, it's, uh, 13 degrees in here. I've been sitting here with this thing shut off for the last hour. But, uh, another coffee. Hasn't rained since. Not plastic. It has not rained, so hopefully that's it, man. Hopefully Mother Nature got all that rain out of her system. It's a heavy fog. Fog is drifting by like smoke almost, but uh, not too bad. Now the breath of wind, about 13 degrees, 10.5 outside down in the hammock down there. 13 in here. 13 and climbing because I got the heater on low, but comfortable, man. Nice bit of sunshine wouldn't hurt now, mind you, but uh. 
I'm not going to get too greedy if the rain and the wind stops. I'll be happy for today. Um, yeah. One more night's sleep in the dream hammock. One more night under the Dutchware side entry tarp. This time tomorrow I'll be packing. Not a lot to pack. It's basically what's in here. The clam, the hammock. The insulation off the hammock and all that stuff. I bought a, um, the trail, trail gears, I think makes the, uh, the anaconda. It's a snake skin for your hammock and a stuff sack for the hammock. It's marketed as being able to put everything you own, like uh, your top quilt, your pillow, your bottom quilt, your hammock, your everything all in one bag. No go. No go. I was able to stuff the hammock and the under quilt with a lot of messing around. It's, you'd never get the top quilt in there or anything else. So I've basically been just storing the under quilt in the hammock, the under quilt protector in the hammock, in that, and that's pretty much the full of that bag. So yeah, that's the XL in case you're wondering, it is the extra large anaconda, but no go. But that's where my under quilt protector was I was looking for earlier in the trip. It was on the hammock in the bag. But yeah, it, it won't stuff everything like they say. So, so there's that. But still, it's a uh, it's worth the money. It's like a hundred bucks. It um, definitely makes set up and tear down a lot easier. Just to be able to put the hammock in a snake skin and then put the hammock in a double ended stuff sack. That's a little easier, no doubt about it. Yeah, we can tell. But it's, uh... You have to tell with that mesh. But it is still... It's not raining, but man, it's a heavy mist. It's quite a heavy fog. Practically raining. I just went down to get my Apple Watch, and uh, they're wet, man. <laughs> it's uh, everything outside is wet. The tarps are wet. The, my glasses got wet. It's um, misty, heavy mist. I see it falling, almost like rain. So, keeping everything wet. It's not making noise, but it's definitely accumulating and making everything stay soaked. <laughs> anyway, let's hope this uh, tapers off. Weather said it was supposed to clear up over Wednesday night and uh, supposed to be overcast, but no precipitation on Thursday. So hopefully things dry out, man. If not, pack it up wet. There's some hooks down in the basement. We'll hang everything up and let it all dry out in the basement. And uh, yeah, that was 2:30. I've been sitting here playing some guitar, playing some uh, songs just for myself, just messing around and listening, watching some YouTube videos, listening to a bit of podcast, listening to some Jerry Reed tunes. Passing the time away, I couldn't believe it. Look down, it's holy crap, it's 2.30 already, man. Um, still foggy out there. Still a pretty foggy, heavy, uh, it's a heavy mist, man. It doesn't seem like it's raining, but it is still, still accumulating on the tarp, still falling out of the trees down there on the hammock. But it's uh, better than it was, at least it's not raining, at least it's not windy. It's warm. It's uh, almost 11 degrees out. 16 sitting there on the table, so it's a good 20 degrees in here now, nice and comfortable. But I am just passing the time away here. 
listening to some tunes, listening to some podcasts, uh, hang your own, ham, hammock hangers, the hammock hangers podcast. I used to love the hang your own hang podcast, but it seems, seems to have gone dormant, um, hasn't been many uploads, so, but the hammock hangers podcast is pretty active, UGQ has a pretty decent podcast, or had one going for a little while there as well that I was enjoying, but. another two and a half hours to supper time, that's about what I'm looking forward to now. I say, yeah, just touching base, checking in, still here. <laughs> the people came down and turned around and left. They took a look in, I waved, they honked. We had the thing. <laughs> but I'm back to being alone here, I'm pretty sure. I don't think there's anybody else here besides those two. That was an hour or so ago. I went for a little walk. Weather's not too bad. It's foggy. Excuse me. It's foggy, but it's uh, a crazy bad or anything. I mean, we just go for a little peek around. River's running away. It's a. Uh, Newfoundland spring, but there's still got a lot of springing to do before spring is sprung. <laughs> Pretty sure it was an outhouse. I say that about every time I come here. Some string in the trees down here. I just noticed. Didn't take a knife with me or anything. It's a weird spot to be stringing a tarp down here, isn't it? Again, you don't know what this place was like way back in the way back. Old man's beard trees. <laughs> it is five o'clock. <laughs> five o'clock supper time. It's gonna be a pretty easy supper. But a delicious supper all the same. I'll come back when supper's on, you'll see what's cooking. Three cheeseburgers. Oh yeah, and some salads. Uh, incidentally, when I, uh, when I looked at the advertisement for this, it's advertised as being able to fit 18 hamburgers. <laughs> Are you sure you don't mean eight? Eighteen hamburgers. Yeah. Who the hell needs eighteen hamburgers? Come on. Oh, we're getting somewhere now. Just gonna toast up some bread. I thought on it last night. I was like, oh, I didn't bring hamburger buns. But. I brought a loaf of bread. Oh yeah, it's gonna be delicious. And I got a Southwest salad and a potato salad. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Now how's that look for supper three? It's three cheeseburgers, potato salad, and a Southwest salad. Hell yeah. It's an easy supper, a delicious supper. Holy crap, that was, that was a delicious supper, but man, that was too much. Oh my gosh. I'll just soon go crawl in the hammock and go to sleep out of it. It's uh, 5.56, another three hours I am, four hours maybe. Man, three burgers and uh, Salad and a half of potato salad. I killed it all, man. It almost killed me, though. Oh, man. Too much food. I've been trying to shed some pounds, walking the trail, trying to eat a little bit better. 
Eh, I come out here, I like to plan out some decent meals and splurge, but uh, that was too much. Two burgers would have been fine. I should not have taken three. One salad would have been fine. I should not have taken two. Potato salad and two burgers would have been a perfect meal. But anyway, anyway, you live and you learn. I'll, uh, I will get back into my routine when I get home and start hitting the trail a bit better and eating better, all that good stuff. But this is my last night here. Go out with a bang. Boom. <laughs> Oh, the Southwest salad's delicious, though, man, with the crunched-up Doritos in there. Mm. Fantastic. Temperature's dropping a little bit, down to 9 degrees, 12.8 in here. Hands are cold. <coughs> it's not that cold. It's, uh, it's good. Still foggy. Haven't rained since. Has not rained in hours and hours, but the fog is still kind of accumulating droplets on everything. There's a little teeny tiny spider. Tiny, tiny, tiny spider. Anybody who's arachnophobic, that would give you the heebie jeebies. <laughs> that shit don't bother me too much. But, um, yeah. What a meal. Useless here now. <laughs> uh, listening to podcasts, listening to the hammock hangers. Very interesting. Listening to the one with Dutch and Fee about Dutchware. Future plans and stuff. Freeze dried meals from Dutchware. That's pretty interesting. I'll have to take a peek at that when I get home. A peek at nothing right now. I have no internet at all. So. <laughs> There's been no traffic since those guys left earlier this afternoon. That's a good thing. I was going for 7 o'clock. 20 to 7. Less than. A um, few things I didn't mention. I saw a rabbit go by here just before supper. Full running. Just shot past the sight. I was like, what's chasing him? Anything chasing him? <laughs> Nothing's chasing him. I don't know. Thought that was odd. Last time I was here, the rabbits were so tame. I was slamming car doors, packing up my gear, and the rabbit was by my feet. This time he shot past me at about 40 miles an hour, so I don't know. Um, I also should mention, not last night, but the first night, Monday night, uh, I was lying in the hammock just going to sleep. Of course, all the time you can hear foghorns. There's there's one behind me up in uh, Trapassi. And I think there's another one down in Cape Hayden. Uh, you can hear those at various different times, I guess, when the wind changes. Very faint. Uh, I don't know if you guys could hear it on the camera and the uh, recordings at all. You hear it louder, obviously, when you settle down at night and it gets pitch black dark. And especially when there's no wind, you can hear those uh, foghorns going. But uh, Monday night, in the middle of the night, all of a sudden I could hear a different foghorn, much louder and much bassier, much deeper in tone. And I'm thinking it was a boat. I'm thinking it was actually a ship crossing, blowing its horn in the fog as well. And uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool how in tune you get to your surroundings. You know, you hear these two foghorns. And all of a sudden I hear this bassy one, louder, closer. I was thinking, and it, it went away after a while. It was definitely a ship passing, uh, blowing its horn. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, just killing a bit of time, just kind of lost in quiet contemplation in my mind here. No podcasts, none of that stuff. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a breakfast tomorrow. I think I might try and get on to go early. I was thinking I was in no rush. Was actually, I was going to stay till Friday. But I'm thinking I might just get up, get a couple of coffees. If the weather's good, pack up. Maybe get out of here by dinner time. Make a beeline down to uh, Tim Hortons in Whitless Bay. Usually that's my my uh, tradition in my, my little 
pleasure to myself on the way out of here. I usually stop to the Tim Hortons in Whitless Bay and grab a coffee and a breakfast sandwich. Probably what I'm going to do tomorrow. So, In the Loop and Renews had a, had a sign out last year, try our new breakfast sandwich. I got up one morning and left eager to go try it. Got there at 8 o'clock. They didn't open till 9. I wasn't waiting for an hour, so I just left. No, they don't have the sun anymore, so I don't think they have breakfast sandwiches. So. Not sure. I got an eggs. So I could do another breakfast tomorrow, and I am literally in no hurry. <sighs> if it's nice tomorrow, I might, might dawdle around. I might hang around. I mean, I don't have to leave tomorrow till whenever. I don't have to leave tomorrow. I could easy stay here till Friday morning if I wanted to do that. Hell, I could stay till Saturday morning. I don't have anything to do till Saturday evening. <laughs> nah, I'm probably gonna bail out early tomorrow. Sands breakfast. Kind of what I'm thinking. There, just a, a brain dump to you guys. <laughs> well, the evening is winding down. It's 20 after 8. It's at 9 o'clock. I am uh, going to get the last night of this weekend on to go. Down and curl up in the old hammock for the last night. Still foggy. Still wet. Still full. <laughs> what a supper. It was awesome. Um, I presume it's going to be a dark night with this kind of fog. Every night has been like that, man. Open your eyes and close your eyes and there's no difference, you know what I mean? <laughs> Still, there's light in the sky till 20 after 9, another hour. Mm. I'm getting the eyes just thinking about it, man. Oh, the UGQ Bandit is just a perfect, perfect top quilt, man. Perfect. I really enjoy it. I gotta say, it's a very comfortable, perfect temperature rating for most of the year. Yeah. I get in there now, put on the balaclava, pull up my hood, and uh, I got, and I got it cinched around my neck. I've got control over everything. I can control the hood with these. I can control the tightness of the top quilt around my neck. I can reach up and I can control where my uh, Bella Clava sits. And I can also grab the condensation catcher. <laughs> it's pretty cool. This is a, a lot of control just sitting right here on my chest, around my neck. But it's um, pretty good. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm telling you. Supper took the good out of me. Three burgers, two salads. Yeah. Nine o'clock can't come quick enough. 25 after. Eight. Not a bit of time now. Once it starts to get a bit dark. Like I said, nine o'clock, I'm going to drop a few melatonins. Tune out for the evening. Oh, I woke Siri up. Um, and yeah, no breakfast tomorrow, I don't think. I might change my mind. I don't know. It might be a beautiful day. We might stay early afternoon. Nothing wrong with it if I do. But if it's like this, I'm just going to get up and get a couple of coffees and... Uh, Get a little pep in my step from some caffeine, and that's it. It'll take me a few minutes, man. It won't take me long. Basically, just got to pack up what's in here into the car. Pack up the insulation back into the bags and get that back into the car. The hammock and the clam. We're on the road. <sighs> Could have downloaded another movie. 
that wouldn't have sucked. I thought I did. I got two downloads there that aren't complete. So, hey, you live and you learn. And out of all the music I downloaded on YouTube Music, only Chet and Jerry Reed seems to be there. Which, like I said, you know, I'm a huge fanboy, so that don't bother me any bit. But I will definitely try and get some more music and some more videos. Anyway, like I said, this weekend I've got a show to play. And then it's the uh, May 24th weekend, so... If it's nice next week, I'm gonna try and seam seal this clam. And like I said, I'm gonna do a bit of uh, maintenance on the hammock. I'm gonna wash the hammock in the tub and dry it out. And if I can get all that done by the mid of next week, I can't see why I'm not coming back here at the end of March, May. The end of May, the weekend after, why not? See if I can get some company to come on the next trip. If I don't, I'll bring you. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you in a half an hour horizontal in the hammock. Here we are. I'm ah, pretty situated. Got a... Uh, Got the nightly melatonins in me. I've got top quilt in place, pretty much. Um, good to go. Anyway, it was a good day. Rain seems to have stopped. Had an awesome supper. Still some rain dripping out of the trees. Like I said, the mist is so heavy that it's uh, it's accumulating and it's making it still very wet. So there's that. Hopefully it clears, uh, clears off nice tomorrow morning and uh, don't have to tear down wet gear. But if I do, if I do, that's not the worst crime, is it? <laughs> anyway, folks. Checking out on Wednesday night. I will see you Thursday morning, bright and early. Have a good night. Good morning. We are up. Awake anyway. Oh, it's 7.30. Just about 7.30. It's daylight. I don't think it's sunny. Rain is still pouring out of the trees under the tarp. Has been all night. It hasn't rained, but it's been tree raining. Uh, um, not a big deal. As I will, uh, we'll pack it up the best we can. A little bit wet, not a big deal. I'm not going to be too fussy about putting it in stuff sacks or anything because it's got to come out when I get home and hang up. So, But that's then and this is now, so time to get up and get some coffees and the morning pee. I'm just pressing me to get out of bed real bad here. Ugh. Good sleep. I was awake for a little while, I don't know why. Might have been just a sporadic thumping of water off the tarp. I don't know. I woke up for a while and had to be awake for an hour. No idea what time that was. It was absolute pitch blackness. Like I said, you open your eyes and you close your eyes, and there's no difference whatsoever. But anyway, I uh, drifted back asleep for a while. And we're awake now, so. Coffee time is calling. Oh, yes. <clears throat> 
738. Seven thirty-eight. Coffee's on the go. Kettle's boiling. It is still slightly foggy. It is warm. It's uh, twelve degrees. Twelve out and twelve in. I haven't touched the heater, so twelve point six. Oh, I'd say it's like thirteen degrees, man. Huh? It is very, excuse me, very warm. And no rain. I assume once the sun gets a little more up in the sky, it's going to burn off this bit of fog. Might be a nice day. But you know what that means. I don't know if you can see it on the net, but there's at least five or ten mosquitoes pitched on the net right now. Yeah. So you win one way, you lose the other here. <laughs> you get cold and windy. Or you get warm and mosquito-y. Is that a word? Mosquito-y is a word up here. There's one on the inside. I saw one inside. One breached the perimeter. Man, they're so hard to track and kill. They just, uh... I don't know where he went. Is he on me? He's on me? Is he on me? <laughs> anyway. I need a coffee. That's too much of a burst of energy for this hour of the morning. Oh, the Nescafe Gold. <laughs> if I haven't showed it before, it's the best thing I've discovered, man. It's, um, I'm like everybody. I've had forays with, uh, when I lived in British Columbia, there was a lot of local coffee bean companies. I was buying bags of beans and grinding them and had the percolator. Good coffee, not gonna diss it, not knocking, not knocking it. It's a lot of work in the morning though. Um, I've seen a lot of hikers and campers and guys take a um, little coffee grinder thing, you know, French presses. Didn't like the French press, man. I, I, um, I saw that the Pathfinder School, so Reliance Outfitters Pathfinders, has a uh, has a very cool little backpackable, uh, like a tube of uh, a tube of canvas with all these containers that stack in it that they affectionately call the pantry. I like the idea. And there's a uh, French press that make that mates into the top of that thing, and that's cool. It's in my cart. I was thinking about getting it, but um, I don't know. Honestly, it's such a good coffee, man. The um, the Nescafe Gold Instant, their instant espresso, their instant coffee. It is a plus. Freeze dried. I guess it's a freeze dried coffee, but man. That with a little cream and sugar is a fantastic, fantastic coffee. Easy. Boil the water, a couple of spoonfuls, throw in some water, throw in some cream. Coffee's on the go. I don't have the attention span <laughs> in the mornings anymore, man. I, uh, I don't have that kind of time. On the weekends, I will get up and use the mocha pot and make some nice espresso. and uh, But I still just go with this coffee and... Uh, a shot of Medaglia d'Oro espresso and uh, make a real nice Americano on the weekend. For the most part, man, run of the mill weekdays, camping days. Cannot knock the Nescafe gold. <laughs> well, it's 8 30, and uh, I've just started the second coffee. Here's to you. And uh, just getting a game plan in my head. I think the first thing I need to do is move the guitar up to the front seat out of the way because I don't want it to get wet. <laughs> and like I said, um, pack up what's in here. Shouldn't take too, too long. Pack up the loose gear that's in the hammock, like the, uh, the insulation, the top quilt, under quilt, all that stuff. Um, pop the tarps down. Obviously, put the tarps up in their snakeskins. 
Give myself some better access. Pack up the loose gear. Then I'm just putting the, the tarps and snake skins. I'm not putting them in stuff sacks. I'm not putting the hammock in its, or I'm not putting the uh, clam in its stuff sack either. Pull the doors off and just throw them in the trunk. Throw the clam in the trunk, just loose. It's gotta come out, it's gotta come apart out in the backyard and dry out anyway, so. I can set the clam up in the basement. I might set the clam up in the basement, I don't know. Let's see what the weather's gonna be like a week. Don't know, might set it up out in the backyard and just leave it there to dry. Hopefully we'll get some sunshine the week and a nice warm day and I can uh, seam seal this bitch, man. I'm glad it leaked. I'm glad it did its thing. It didn't leak profusely. I didn't get wet or anything. Just a couple of drops on my cooler. And I had to move my chair out a little bit because one was coming a little bit close to my shoulder. But, I mean, nothing major. It could have been a hell of a lot worse. But I will improve things. I will definitely seam seal the hell out of all those. The perimeter, every seam on the top, I'll just seam seal the whole thing. It's just as easy to do it all when you're out at it. But here's with those mosquitoes looming in at me there. <laughs> it's an ocean of a man. It's terrible. Um, here's hoping for a speedy, speedy teardown. But this fog, plus this area of the province, plus this time of year, it's a dangerous drive home. So it's not going to be a fast trip back up the shore. i to take my time, get my moose peepers on, my moose vision. It's the deadliest animal in Canada, man. Moose kills more people per capita. Prove me wrong. Google it. It's the deadliest animal in Canada. When you break it down. Certainly the deadliest animal in this province. Moose are not um, moose are not native to Newfoundland. Moose were brought in, I believe, in the early part of the last century, 1910, 1912, somewhere around there. They were introduced here for hunting. Nothing else, just for sport, for hunting. And um, they have no natural predators, so of course they absolutely thrive. If we don't keep them in check through hunting, they will overrun this place, and uh, <laughs> they are overrunning this place, man. They spend, they, uh, you can't cross the island without seeing one or two. You play in a band like I do and travel the island like I do, you've seen your share. I've seen them a lot, and uh, I've been in a car accident where one, where the guy was driving the car actually hit one. It came through the windshield on my side, tore a hole on the windshield, hit the A-pillar on the corner of the Dodge Neon, totally pancaked in that A-pillar, ripped the hole in the windshield. We came to a screeching halt, obviously, and the moose hit the ground behind us with its back hind legs broken. And um, you're so concerned with what's happening in front of you that you forget there's an 18-wheeler. There was an actual tractor trailer barreling down the highway at 110 kilometers an hour behind us. Just stopped in the nick of time. And we got our wits about us and we came to a, uh, you know, we looked at each other. Geez, you okay, dude? And I had little pin spots of blood on my face from the glass coming in, but nothing. nothing thank God, no, uh, no serious injuries. And... Uh, I remember we got out of the car. Uh, as soon as I opened the door, this trucker was there and he was, I could see that I'd never forget the look in his face. And I got out of the car and he was like looking me over. He's like, dude, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. Holy shit, man. He's like, I just, I just stopped in time. Like, you sure you're okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. And he took me back from the car. I remember the trucker took me and we walked back to his trailer. We walked for a bit. And I was saying, man, what a sin to poor moose. And he kept looking at me, disbelief, like, dude, fuck the moose, man. Are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine, man. I'm okay. And after being back by his truck, we uh, we walked back up to the car, and it was the first time that I saw the car from the outside. 
And when I saw the car from the outside, I understood then why the trucker was so in disbelief that that was okay. <laughs> the whole passenger side of the car was just fucking mangled. I mean, to say that I was sat in that a minute ago was a miracle. Nothing short of a miracle. My friend and I both worked together, and I remember we got up the next morning, and we both went to work on time. And the guys at work were like, man, it was, why didn't you take a day off? A day off? Are you kidding? I couldn't wait to come to work this morning, man. The coffee tasted better. The air smelled better. The sun shined brighter. This is the best day of my life, man. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> anyway, it's uh, kind of sad that it takes something like that for you to appreciate life. But, um, yeah, it sure, makes, sure uh, was a sobering reminder of what a moose, why a moose is the deadliest animal in Canada. And... Uh, it's going to be in my mind driving down out of here because this is the thick of it. If you look at uh, if you look at Newfoundland from a map, Newfoundland has a pretty much a main body, the mainland of Newfoundland. There's a long northern peninsula that goes up. There's your mainland body. There's a little what we call the isthmus, or what is called an isthmus, just a little joining strip of land that joins the Avalon Peninsula, which is a smaller, big mainland body, little joining piece, Avalon Peninsula. If you look at the Avalon Peninsula where I live, the perimeter of the Avalon Peninsula is where all the cities are. All the towns, all the cities, it's coastal, it's fishing. Most of the, pretty much everything on the Avalon is all the way around the ring of the coast. Um, the center part of the Avalon Peninsula is the Avalon Wilderness Reserve. And literally we are across the street. When I come up here and I come to the main road, if I didn't turn onto the highway and went across the road, you're in the Avalon Wilderness Reserve, which is a huge ecological reserve. Need I say more? Yeah, it's uh, obviously home for the Avalon Peninsula's moose population. And um, so definitely a slow ride. Take it easy. <laughs> slow riding, mama, it's all right. Take a slow ride, no music, pay attention. Hopefully this fog lifts on the way. It's one thing about Newfoundland, the fog is often patchy. So we'll take a slow drive down the shore, up the shore. I keep coming down, we're going up the shore. Mm. Right now I'm about as far south on the Avalon Peninsula as you can get. Cape Hayden is pretty much as far south as you can get. We're turned, we're going across. You kind of drive down the southern shore. Cape Hayden's about the most southerly point. It turns then and goes across the southern shore, which is where Transgulf Park is. And you keep going and then you get to Trapassi. And Trapassi, it starts to turn then and come back up the inside. So we're about as far south as you could possibly get on the Avalon Peninsula right now. But um, we're driving up out of here. And while we're doing story time over the second coffee this morning, I was thinking earlier, and I just wanted to get it under the film here, that um, when I take a friend, and I found a friend, I found a couple of friends to come on this trip, and nobody seemed to have the time or the ability to do it. I don't mind a solo camping trip. I take you guys with me. And that's true. When I have a friend here, I'm less inclined to sit and film tell stories, play guitar. I don't do that stuff when I have a friend. I engage the friend. I spend time. We do things together, you know? It feels weird to set a camera up with your buddy sitting there and do this blog to a camera. Or this vlogging, I guess this is. But, uh, you know what I mean? Um, it's a different thing. It's a different camping trip when I go solo. It's a much longer, much more in-depth video, I'll give it that. I can play guitar for friends. Obviously, I perform. I play for friends. I, uh, it's not that. I play differently. I play different tunes when I'm by myself. Playing to the camera, playing to YouTube. So it's a different thing. It's, uh, I'm as much... I enjoy it as much to go by myself and talk to the camera as I do to take a friend with me and talk to them. But it's a different trip and it's a different experience having a friend here with you. I couldn't pick one over the other. I 
enjoy the company. I enjoy the solitude. So there's that. Here's to you, YouTube. Thanks for coming. Well, that is it. Coffee's drunk. <laughs> Coffee's drank. I got everything kind of loosely started to get packed up here. I got a plan in my mind on how to do this. Um, mosquitoes, I don't know. I'm thinking they thinned out a little bit, but not really. But uh, that's it. I'm going to have to deal with those guys. Water is still dripping off my tarp, so it's deceptive, man. You don't realize how much the fog accumulates on stuff and still keeps it wet, but it's all still pretty wet. So I'm going to film a little bit of the tear down here. I'm going to pack up most of the loose stuff because that's not too interesting. But when it comes to tearing down the uh, tearing down the tarps and the hammock and the clam, I am going to film it a little bit. Again, like I said, I'm not worrying about stuffing things in its stuff sacks. It's all got to come out. I'm just going to throw the trunk loose. It's got to come out and hang up in the basement to dry anyway. So, but I will touch base before we uh, before we end this vlogging camping session video. So, I'll be back.
10.37, man. Hour and a half. Check it out. We're done. This was the spot where the clam was. That was the spot where the hammock was. Don't leave without me. Don't leave without me. <laughs> well, folks, that is it. Everything is tore down, packed up. Well, <laughs> not packed up as nice as when I came here, but it's in here. There was no point in packing it up too tight. I uh, just got to pull it all out and set it all up to dry when I get home. But anyway, I figured I would end this video the way we started this video. Driving up Chants Cove Road on the way in the opposite direction. It was a great three days, four days really, three and a half days, three nights, three awesome sleeps in the hammock, three awesome suppers, one awesome tune <laughs> on the guitar. Yeah, this was a successful weekend in spite of Mother Nature's efforts to thwart it with rain, so can't complain, man. Great time was had by all. Speaking of that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. Bye.